Okay, just thought I'd do a little quick update on the uh, inductive proximity sensor that I added to the new HRSA i3 MK3S upgrade. <coughs> just got all the upgraded parts put on there and the firmware put in there and this is the first test print. And uh, sensor seemed to work fine. I learned quite a bit. It's a little bit different than what I explained in, in part one. But, um, for example, you can see there is filament in there, so the LED is not on. In my case, this proximity sensor, the LED is going to light up when you uh, are out of filament. So let's go to Tune. And let's go to Change Filament. Let's check it out here. I have done this once before just to see if it was working and everything seemed to be fine. And press knob to unload filament. Now, if it shows on the camera, the LED is lit. A nice bright red. <coughs> it's asking me if it was successful. Yes. Now it says to insert the filament. Again, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing that shows up on the camera. I can't tell from where I'm at. So then we'll insert the filament. And immediately took it. The light went out, saying it's got filament. And again, I didn't do any of this because there was anything wrong with their new design. The new design is actually very cost effective, very small, it's going to work great. I did it because I got tired of waiting for the uh, upgrade kit to arrive. It still hasn't arrived. Now I notice on their website it's saying 10 week lead time. So, kind of glad I went ahead and experimented. <clears throat> the long story short, I'm going to try to scoot this camera over to my laptop here. Let's see if we can get this... Uh, show up on screen. I don't want to hand hold it because I want to be able to point at some stuff. So hopefully you can see this schematic. Basically this is a schematic of the IR sensor that was intended to be in the MK3S and this gave me all the information that I've been trying to find out for weeks and weeks and weeks and the one bit of information I found on YouTube turned out to be wrong, but long story short, you've got your three wires, you're running five volts up to it through a 330 ohm resistor to the infrared LED in the sensor, so it gets five volts all the time, so that LED is always on. The way it's designed is when the filament is not in the hot end, then there is nothing breaking this beam, so that means the phototransistor is on and since the emitter is connected to ground that means the collector is then driven to ground. When you do put filament in that little arm swings in here and breaks that light beam that means then the transistor is then off doesn't conduct so this 10k resistor will then try to pull it up to the 5 volt rail. And what they've added here is an end channel uh, FET as an inverter driver out. So when there is well, which way you want to look at it. When there is no filament, so the light is shining through, this transistor's on, this is ground, then this FET will be off. And again, it has a 10K pull up, so that means the, the control line out is going to be high, pulled up by the 10K. Um, when there is filament, this light beam gets broken, so the NPN transistor is turned off, so it's pulled high. The high on the gate turns this on, which is ref the FET, which is referenced to ground, so now the control line goes low. So no filament, you should have a high. Yes filament, you should have a low. And let's see, I had a picture here. If I can, uh, normally I work this thing with a mouse, let's see how this goes. And here's your, your Einzi board that's in there, and this is where the, <clears throat> the sensor is going to connect. The only real difference that you do when you go to the board is normally this white wire is over one position. So release it from the clip if you're reusing the, the original cable, which is what I had to do, and move it over one. And then there is a blue wire you no longer need. Remove it all together. And then your red wire is your 5 volts, and your black wire is your ground. You just pigtail in there. So as long as you find the right kind of uh, proximity sensor, you can just tap it right in there. 
<clears throat> I had a, a few different ones. The turns out that the you know the the type that was used on the the TiVo Flash would have worked. Being an end sensor, the sensing happened on the end of it, which I talk about in the first video. That would make it hard to fit it in the case. But um, if you got the type top sensing one, and it was the NPN output, and it was uh, normally open, that would pretty much interface directly into your INZ board. You would uh, just put a 10k pull-up resistor on it just like their board had and you'd be good to go. The, you wouldn't be able to see the indicator LED on, the, uh, on that particular style of proximity um, sensor, but so what, right? Doesn't really matter. I just wanted to see it for the fun, but I thought it would add on novelty. It's just one more, one more way of knowing if everything's working right or if something's not working. Another way of troubleshooting what's wrong. So. There you go. I think that's all I wanted to share this time. Is uh, I've got a uh, nice picture of the power supply, right? Yeah, let's slide over here. I've got uh, all the upgrades and the new hot end on, so I'll be testing those. I've got uh, my proximity sensor in there since the original kit didn't arrive. And by the way, I'm sure most of you know that everybody under the sun is selling that upgrade kit now. I mean, back when I first started thinking about this, I couldn't find anybody selling it except for Prussia. And then all of a sudden, everybody, you can get them on eBay, Amazon, AliExpress. So, <laughs> whatever, right? Just having some fun, just trying to learn. That's what it's all about. And I thought I'd just share what I, what I found, tie this together with the first video. And you can do pretty much anything you want.